this is central to the issue because we're talking about children. We're talking about bringing children to reunite the middle families. I'm not going to be bullied by liberal tears on this one, OK? I would say, how about neighbouring countries do a bit more? I find that's an abhorrent statement. How about neighbouring countries? Don't all talk over each other. The downplaying of Hamas on this show, by the way, is outrageous. I'm not going to be bullied by liberal tears. What a line. Fantastic. Professor Matt Goodwin really goes into the lion's den in this very heated debate about immigration from Palestine. I am surprised they allowed him on the show, to be honest. It shows all the mainstream political parties are part of the same liberal establishment. They all try to gan up on him. The Conservative MP even accuses him of patriotism. I'm not quite sure why uh, sort of Matt's brand of, of, of sort of patriotism seems to involve talking a lot of that down. We shouldn't be doing that. Hey, oh, all right, well, I'll come at of touch. Unbelievable. This debate is brilliant because the professor just exposes the lot of them. The Labour MP says the scheme is only for Palestinian children who already have family here. Yeah, right. Who believes that? Before you know it, half of Palestine will be here. <clears throat> Matt Goodwin says we shouldn't be taking in any Palestinian refugees. And they immediately all gan up on him saying, yes, but they're all just children. What? Like these are just children? Child, they're not here. Instead, this. <laughs> A young boy asks us to repent our sins and then... <laughs> And how do you heal a mind like that? I have no idea how you heal a mind like that. But the answer most definitely isn't importing them into our country. That's for sure. They may be innocent now, but what about when they grow up? We gave the Manchester Arena Bombers parents asylum and look how their son repaired our kindness. And he was born and bred in Manchester. And dad never experienced the trauma of conflict. This bit I found really astonishing. The professor says, surveys show the British people don't think we should take in Palestinian refugees. He then gives facts about how it's been a total disaster when Denmark took them in. There is no reply to that. The panel simply ignore him and all proceed to agree with this guest's comment. Yeah. Well, popular support is never going to be an indicator of what's the moral decision. In other words, who cares what the British people want is what he really means. Someone should try explaining the meaning of democracy to him. It means the people get a say in what goes on in their own country. It gets very heated between him and the professor, who easily rebukes all his crazy arguments. He's clearly a supporter of Hamas. Apparently, there is a lot of support for Hamas and radical Islamist ideas in Palestine. I'd say that's up to them. They are free to do so in their homelands. And those views may well become more extreme because of the trauma of conflict. But I certainly don't want people with those views walking among us on our streets. Yes, we can provide aid, but we most definitely should not be bringing them all to the UK. We've taken in enough. It's not our responsibility to take in the entire world. It's absolutely great watching someone who speaks for the British public stick it to a full liberal panel who are incredibly hostile to him. Take a watch. Um, uh, Matt, good when you've said you don't want to see a visa scheme for Gazans. Why? Uh, lots of reasons. The first is most British people don't support it. Um, we've seen polling over the last few weeks uh, which shows that. I, I begin and end with the principle of popular sovereignty. Yeah, you gov, uh, most Brits say we don't have a moral obligation. I've also polled Brits and they, they're not supportive of a specific scheme. Uh, secondly, I don't really think it's on us to solve every uh, refugee issue around the world after Hong Kong, after Ukraine, after uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we've taken hundreds of thousands. Thirdly, uh, security services and others have been very open in saying that this is uh, potentially quite a serious uh, security risk. We've got very high levels of support for Hamas. 
got very high levels of support for ideas that I don't think are compatible with British well, ways on. of life. If I All can right. finish, well, we've also had a study in Denmark. What happened in Denmark when Denmark took large a, numbers of Palestinian yeah, refugees? Hang on. What happened? But these are large, people, but hang on. No, these are people who've got family members into here. The we'll, we'll, we'll get into Joe, some of your criti hang on, we'll get into well, some of your criticisms. Yeah, you can in a minute. But let me just get Taj. Let me just get Taj to respond broadly. Also, relatives in the UK around the world. Hundreds of millions. Sure. To your first point, which is that Matt doesn't think that there is popular support for the idea. Well, popular support is never going to be an indicator of what's the moral decision. Um, let's look at Gaza. The vast majority of Palestinians who live in Gaza are already refugees. Uh, many of them were expelled from their homeland. And if you last week marked the 76th anniversary of the Nakba, the catastrophe, where 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from their home, uh, 500 villages were destroyed. Um, so now we've got Palestinians who are seeing the carpet bombing of hospitals. Remember that half of Gaza's population are children. They weren't even alive when Hamas was elected. But does and that mean that the UK should take many more, um, if any at all, Palestinian refugees, the Gazan refugees you're talking about here? Absolutely. I think there is a moral obligation. If you look at Britain's colonial history uh, in the region, Britain has played a role in what's happening in Palestine. And you can't have it both ways. You cannot cheerlead a genocide in Gaza. You cannot destabilise regions uh, across the world and then complain about refugees. Cheerle sorry, I don't think anyone's sorry. cheerleading I mean, just, just, a, a, a genocide. No, well, no. hang on, let, Matt, mainstream you... Mainstream politics no. is cheerleading a genocide. They are supporting what Israel is doing and we continue to arm Israel while they are massacring All right. civilians. In, in, in what sense is that cheerleading a genocide? That's because an incredibly they, offensive not just, thing to say. It might be offensive to hear it, but it is true. And so Palestinians, who, who is doing it? 35,000 Palestinians well, have been killed in Gaza and our government have refused to act. But I answer the question answer because to accuse <coughs> people of cheerleading of genocide is, I can understand why the politicians would be uh, offended, but, but who is cheerleading? When Keir Starmer went on LBC and said Israel was justified in cutting off food, water and electricity to a civilian population which is known uh, as collective punishment under international law, I found that deeply offensive. Well, let Rachel, let, Ra let Rachel respond to that. I, I, th I think we're all very disturbed by the statement, but he stood back from it and now Labour's got a very clear position on Gaza and that's really important. But what this scheme, just returning back to the, the yes. issue in yes. question, yes. what this scheme is very limited, short period. And of course, the bigger call is we want a ceasefire. We want the killing to stop. We don't want there to be a scheme because we want the collective community to say enough is enough. Let's start building the peace, not the war. But whilst this horrific situation is go going on in Gaza at the moment, we have got an obligation to the people that we've invited to our country that are here rightfully in our country to say we're not going to deny you of having a family life and we want to bring your families together, your little children who are ducking the bombs at the moment, we want to bring them to a place of safety with you. Any father would want that for their child and we want to be able to deliver that. I mean, how clear are you in your mind, uh, Matt, that the security risks, presumably because you and others feel that many Gazans, we don't know how many, might have sympathy uh, well, with Hamas. we do know Hamas. how many. Well, We've got the polling, the polling, the polling is, it, the polling is not clear. It is disputed. I'm not going to go well, into message, but I've read, so I know, but I've read all, I've read all of yeah. the polling and it isn't clear. We are talking about children joining families here. So how great is the security risk that you are talking well, about? Well, I take security services seriously. And children. I think, what, uh, can I finish? Mm. I've been interrupted. Yeah, yeah, go on. I take the warnings of security <laughs> security services uh, seriously, when we talk about cheerleading, um, I think there are lots of people in this country, lots of British Jews included, who have been sick of six months of watching cheerleading on Britain's streets for Hamas, Islamist extremists and terrorists, and do not want to open the door to more people into this country who similarly sympathise with what is, according to our own government by the way, an extremist terrorist organisation. Why can't Egypt do more? Why can't Jordan do more? Jordan has we, what about, what about million what about, Palestinians in Jordan sorry, at the sorry, moment. 1.8 million. What about other neighbouring countries in the area? Why, 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 why well, Britain? Let me go to Taj. What do you say why about Britain? the security risks? Do you admit these are legitimate concerns? Hamas is deemed a terrorist organisation. Its stated aim is to destroy Israel uh, and to create not a Palestinian state alongside um, uh, an Israeli or Jewish state, but to actually replace it. Do you think those are legitimate concerns for people here 
if there were was a scheme that would bring over Gazan refugees. Hamas is a political party. One of the reasons it's Hamas... It's an extremist organisation. OK, and it's a political party. It's, it's also does... deeply anti-Semitic. Okay. Yes, it's... OK. Now, Hamas was elected uh, in Gaza. One of the reasons they were supported was because of welfare programmes and uh, Fatah was seen as a very corrupt party and many people supported Hamas. Fatah now, in charge in the West Bank, indeed, in a different part of indeed. the area. Yeah. Now, the reality is this. There are, we, we are talking about millions of Palestinians. We never make generalisations. And if we're talking about a population where half of whom are children, are you really saying to me a 10-year-old Palestinian who might be severely injured, who might need urgent medical treatment, is a threat to this country? I think we have counter-terrorism laws in well, this country uh, to make well, sure Lady that Marza, we why, have... Why is a 10-year-old Palestinian going to be a threat? I think, the, as I say, I think the underlying principle of taking Brit more people into Britain from Palestine, so not a from Gaza. Single Palestinian is... child, not a single Palestinian would... child where you could save a life. Every po what crime has we can a get, Palestinian we can get, child? We can, get very, we can get very abstract about it. It's not abstract. This is I've central given you a to the issue because we're, I'm, we're talking I'm about you, children. You, we're talking about bringing not, children not, to reunite the middle of families. I'm not going, I'm not going to be bullied by liberal tears on this one, OK? <laughs> I would say, how about well, neighbouring countries do a I bit more? I find that's an abhorrent how about, statement. How about I, 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 don't, don't all talk over how each about other, neighbouring Matt, Don't shout over everyone. Do a little bit more, because you know what I care about? I care about the British Jewish community. How do they feel? Opening the door to more Palestinians, the people who are supportive of, support of Hamas. Uh, the downplaying of Hamas on this show, by the way, is outrageous. It's an extremist Islamist organisation. The marching, the expression of sympathy but for when... Hamas in this country has been outrageous. And I would be, I would expect Labour, after everything you went through with Jeremy Corbyn, just to be a little bit more sensitive on this issue and stick up for British. Well, Jews. let Rachel, let Rachel speak. Okay, we are talking about children coming to this country, children who have got nothing. They have been moved from place to place in Gaza at the moment. They are coming to be with their mother or their father who are here in the UK. A very limited scheme for a short period of time until the horrific bombing of Gaza comes to an end. These are innocent civilians. These aren't people who are terrorists. These are people that want to be with their mummy and daddy and to have some sort of life. And I'm afraid that.